fewer than 100 or fewer than 500 employees to, pro to provide two additional weeks or two weeks of paid sick leave, but uh, not to exceed $511 per day uh, in, in leave. Uh, the Department of Labor may issue regulations to exempt employers with fewer than 50 employees if granting the leave would jeopardize uh, businesses' viability. Um, but this is also being provided in addition to whatever. I think you froze, Chris, on your end. Chris, I don't know if you can hear us, but I see everybody else moving and you're, you're frozen. Uh, oh, there you are. Sorry. Perfect. There you are. I've been having internet connection problems lately. <laughs> okay, uh, carry on. Um, but as I said, that we recognize that in the phase two bill, the tax credit issue doesn't necessarily address uh, cash flow issues or cash on hand issues for a lot of businesses. So there were provisions in the phase three bill that's currently being uh, currently being uh, considered that will help uh, improve that situation for businesses. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, once the paid sick leave it, you know, is exhausted, then you go to the paid family and medical leave. Uh, this provides employers or uh, pr provides employees with up to 12 weeks of paid family and medical leave uh, for for employees who have employed, been employed for at least 30 days. Uh, if they are out of, out of work in order to care for children, if schools are closed or daycare is unavailable because of public, the public health emergency or they're out to care for sick relatives. Um, employees are compensated at two thirds of their regular rate and shall not exceed $200 per day or $10,000 in the aggregate. Again, businesses are compensated for this through a refundable tax credit on their quarterly taxes. Um, as for unemployment insurance, the provisions of the phase two bill help loosen up a lot of the state requirements with respect to waiting periods and interpreting the able available and actively looking for work tests for eligibility. Plus it provides an additional 1 billion in funding for state unemployment programs. Now we are now, we're now on the phase three bill. As I said, this is the bill that was passed last night in the Senate and we expect it to be voted and passed out of the house tomorrow morning. Um, this bill focuses a lot more on the liquidity issues for businesses. Uh, it does this first by, um, uh, by, by not requiring businesses to pay their portion of the payroll tax. Uh, this is done, being done to help businesses have more cash flow, more cash on hand so that they can pay some of these, the, pay the sick leave and paid family medical leave ben benefits that they're being mandate, mandated to require. It also will help them pay a number of other bills. Uh, this is, it's delaying payment of the payroll taxes uh, until uh, the end of 2021. And then at the end of 2021, businesses will only be required to pay half of what they owe. And then the remaining half will not have to be, will not come due until t the end of 2022. In addition to this, it creates a program, a $350 loan program for small businesses of uh, fewer than 500 employees. This, this loan program will be modeled on the SBA 7A program. And what it does is allow businesses to borrow two and a half months of payroll up to $10 million. Up to $10 million. And this, this can be used to pay for the business's payroll. It can be used to, be paid, or used to pay utilities, uh, mortgage interest, and a number of other business expenses. So long as they use this money to pay these expenses and they do not reduce their payroll, the loans convert to a grant and our, 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 the business will not have to repay it. Um, I should also say that as far as paying payroll, uh, the, these loans can be used to pay up to $100,000 uh, in salary for each employee. As far, you know, as far as mid-size and larger businesses go, the phase three bill uh, provides $500 billion in funding to create uh, 
loans, loan guarantees, and a lending facility to be administered by the Department of Treasury and the Federal Reserve. Um, this is going to be uh, a pretty broad program uh, that will provide loans to pretty much any business that's being adversely impacted by, by the current crisis. Uh, as for individual benefits, um, as you've seen reported in the press, uh, there are going to be direct payments to uh, individuals, $1,200 per individual with incomes under $75,000. Uh, this will fit, gradually phase out until the uh, individual gets to $99,000 per year in salary, and then it's completely phased out. For families, it's $2,400 per year uh, per family uh, uh, with a combined income of $150,000 per year, and that phases out as you get to $198,000 per year. There's an additional $500 per child provided uh, for families as well. Uh, it also includes four months of enhanced unemployment insurance plus an additional $600 on top of whatever the state already provides. Uh, for student loans, student loan payments and interests are, uh, are suspended until September 30th, 2020. Um, and more broadly, the bill provides $150 billion to states and local governments uh, based on each state's population for covering unforeseen uh, expenses that come up as a, uh, as a result of the, the crisis. Um, and then lastly, um, it provides $100 billion in funding for hospitals uh, to help them cope with getting through this crisis. Um, the bill, is being, the bill was written in a very, very uh, flexible way to give the administration as much uh, flexibility as possible because once Congress completes the phase, phase three bill, likely tomorrow, they intend to recess until April 20th. Um, that being said, uh, you know, it's highly likely that this will not be the last step that Congress takes here. There are a number of uh, outstanding issues. Uh, particularly with uh, the eligibility of certain small businesses that are classified as uh, 501c6s. Uh, they are currently not eligible for the $350 billion loan program. Um, you know, most chambers of commerce, most trade associations, and a lot of other nonprofit organizations organize as C6s, and so we are working to uh, figure out a way to get them made eligible um, either through administrative steps or um, in, in, an, in a subsequent phase four bill. Um, as far as next steps goes, uh, as I said, uh, we, we expect that the phase three bill will be voted out of the House of Representatives tomorrow. They're going to do this on a voice vote so that members of Congress do not have to return to uh, Washington, DC. Um, and then this, the president will in all likelihood sign it sometime tomorrow. Um, you know, that, that is basically where things stand right now with the federal response. Um, as I said, there are a number of other more detailed summaries on our website, uschamber.com, um, as well as what uh, I've been providing Tara, and it sounds like she's been pushing it out to all of you. So with that, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions now or at the end of the, all the presentations. Uh, real quickly, I know that there was some advocacy on behalf of the U.S. Chamber to eliminate payroll taxes. Was that unveiled within this package or is that kind of what you're working on next or no, the, well what we are focused on is eliminating the employer's portion of the payroll tax and that is included in this bill okay um and and that was that is being done to help provide more liquidity for businesses correct okay Great, and so this is actually a great time for me to let our listeners know that you can email your questions to Lindsay at PewalletSumnerChamber.com anytime, and we will be sure to have a few minutes at the end to try to respond to those questions. Or, uh, or admin, A-D-M-I-N, at PewalletSumnerChamber.com. Well, that was fantastic. That's a lot of information. We hope this just gets moved through the house tomorrow and signed off. Uh, so next we're gonna hear from Anthony Anton, who is the president and CEO for the Washington Hospitality Association. Thank you so much for being Anthony. Can you hear can me? You hear okay? me okay? We sure can. All right, there we go. Well, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, we would just, yeah, love to hear from your sector. Um, I also read your CEO letter, and I think it really captured a lot of also just good reminders for businesses. I don't know if you want to speak of, of what you're communicating to your industry, any recent changes or updates you feel relevant to the business community? Uh, sure. Well, again, I'm, uh, I'm sure. 
Sure. Well, again, I, I think I told you I actually grew up with Sumner High School. My parents had Anton's Restaurant and Charlie's Restaurant in Puyallup, and so this is I, uh, this is my hometown. It's great, great to uh, be on the call. Uh, this is a crisis for our industry um, uh, that is unlike any other. So I've been through four industry uh, crises in, in my career, um, uh, from 9-11 to the Great Recession to uh, uh, a couple different foodborne outbreaks. Um, and this is like none of the others. So um, our industry is, is absolutely in crisis now. I think a lot of people are nervous right now. Uh, for those of you who don't know the restaurant business model, the average margin in a restaurant is right around 4%. So if you have a million dollar restaurant, uh, maybe you're making 40000 a year. And so when all the cash stops and all the bills don't right away, um, it, it creates a cash flow crisis that uh, is extreme. So really thankful for the federal bill and the National Restaurant Association has been working with the U.S. Chamber and and everyone to try to get relief going um, so we can take care of our employees and uh, do everything that we can to take care of the industry. Um, the governor has also done a lot of, uh, of varying tax delays and I'm sure you've put out the governor's website on, uh, on what is delayed and, and how you can get relief in different areas. We've also seen a tremendous amount of changes in the unemployment insurance system, both on the federal and state level, much of which we've advocated for. Um, and so, I would bet, but I can't swear to it, there's been at least 17 changes in UI law in the last two weeks, which is uh, incredible. Um, so what are we talking about as an association? What are we doing as an industry? Um, one, if I can ask all of you to order out this week, two or three times, and some of the great food there in Piala, that yep. can only help. Uh, it helps keep at least some people uh, tied to the workforce. It helps keep some cash flow going in the business and also is helping reduce food waste um, and making sure we're, uh, we're adjusting those things. So uh, you can help us by doing that. Um, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, as an association, we've been trying to get out as much information as we can. So I, I'm really available for a lot of questions, but also encouraging uh, our members to act. And I think Tara, that's one of the things that you had talked to me about. Um, is now is not the time to wait around and see what's going to happen. Uh, the reality is we are here. And as the governor mentioned today um, on his uh, press conference, things are getting better. Uh, yesterday was the first day since this crisis began that uh, the disease didn't double in a seven day window. Um, and when he first uh, declared the restaurant closures, um, we had grown three days in a row, right around 400% um, in a seven week window. So we are seeing the, the disease, uh, the virus spread uh, slow down, um, but it's still increased 88%. So it's still growing. We've still got a ways to go, but the good news is um, if we stick with this as a community, um, it's headed the right direction. Um, what I'm asking our members to do is make a decision. I think we're going to be in a serious crisis uh, through April. And so I've asked them to look at their cash flow through April, make decisions that will help them get through this. Certainly the federal package, uh, should the House concur tomorrow, uh, is gonna make a tremendous difference. Um, and that will help adjust cash flow uh, from there. But I'm really asking members to look at that and, and make changes. Many of them have closed outright and helped their employees get unemployment insurance. Others are trying to keep employees busy and trying to keep them engaged in the workforce, which is fantastic where we can. Um, I think those are some of the big things. I think the other thing I'm, I'm asking them to do is look out over the horizon and make long-term strategic decisions. Don't do things that permanently harm your brand. Uh, don't do things that you can't recover from. Um, uh, as you make these big decisions, uh, keep in mind that we're going to get through this. Um, and and in the long run, we want you to have that, that restaurant and hotel and be able to move forward with success. So um, we're trying to answer all the questions we can to help our members make good decisions. From that, I think I'd be open for questions if you had any. Okay, so uh, opening it up for questions, I don't know if any other of the panelists have any questions, but uh, certainly doers, feel free to email them and we'll circle back to answer any of those. 
All right, we've got uh, State House Representative Kelly Chambers here with us. So anxious to uh, hear what you have to say. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, glad to be here and to um, give me what I've been working at the state level. Um, as a member of the Republican Caucus, I'm, uh, we have conference calls every day uh, with our members. And of course, our leadership is working with the inner office. And um, they just got a big conference call with the governor chief staff before coming over here. So, a um, couple of things just to get through this uh, crisis. It's important that people stay home for the next two weeks so that we can hopefully see a decline um, in the coronavirus and spread it. And um, we all just really um, be hunger down right now and, and make sure that it happens and that we stop the spread of this virus. Couple, couple of things that I learned this week that I could share. Um, usually Washington is working on doing the testing, most of the testing for coronavirus, um, but they, prior to this breakout, had a um, research going on researching the flu. And because of their There, I think you. Uh, I think you muted uh, your computer accidentally, so we can't hear anything at the moment. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Okay, keep going. Uh, of course, the next thing that we're concerned about is the state's hospital capacity, and um, the hospital is working to uh, determine the number of ICU beds, the number of uh, ventilators that each um, hospital has, of course the staff in order to treat patients as they come in. Um, so that is being assessed. Um, we're not currently in crisis mode, but certainly if um, the coronavirus not um, slow down, we can get to a point where we overload our hospital systems throughout the state, and that certainly impacts, um, you know, your county, but it also really impacts those who are hospitals throughout the state. So we're concerned about that. And uh, the governor's office is looking at um, um, bringing in uh, uh, additional beds and, and ventilators that uh, help through this crisis. Okay. The website? Okay, we'll go back real quick. Yeah, you. I think yours is muted. So when I muted mine, they didn't hear you. So I think uh, during that very important <laughs> part. <laughs> so I'm happy to be Okay. I, go back. Yeah, the, I can't unmute you. Are you now unmuted? I can unmute myself. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Okay, so back to the... Turn yours off because it's sticking. There we go. Okay. Hope everybody likes being flexible because that's what we're doing. <laughs> we are. Okay. So I want to sh share that information about the Seattle Coronavirus uh, Network. It's called SCAN Public Health, S C A N Public Health.org. Um, they're the ones that are sending out um, home test kits to residents in King County. So if you have to go on the website today, uh, enter your zip code, answer some questions, they can send those out. They're the data modeling for um, tracking the disease, uh, which is going to be very important here. Um, uh, the other issue, um, really, the um, is, is PPE, personal protective equipment. 
Um, honestly, we are in dire need in the state, and uh, it's a national issue because you have states, you know, every state is now beginning to purchase and obtain that PPE, and there's simply not enough. So I know that, um, you know, folks that are members of the um, of ABB, they sent a survey wanting to know if there are manufacturers, businesses out there that is a transition and, and possibly um, switch things over and start manufacturing some of the, the PPE need. Um, and so if, if there are any uh, chamber members that uh, could help participate in this, I um, encourage you to contact my office. Um, we'd like to hear from you and, and become part of the solution there. Uh, we, we have some PPE on hand. Uh, we the states made a request for the um, national stockpile, and we're getting pieces of that. We're not getting everything that we need, but it's important in the long term um, trajectory of being so that healthcare providers have the right equipment so that they are not um, uh, being to the coronavirus. Um, because that's really one of the good things that we have going on is that. Uh, we are seeing a low rate of infection amongst healthcare providers than in the general population. So that's that's a good sign that mm -hmm. our healthcare providers thus far have been, um, you know, covered with, with PE, but we don't run out of that. So I know um, there's there's Chris to be talking later. There's mass meeting going on uh, at the state level. The Department of Corrections is. Um, you know, using some of their manufacturing to, to start um, making gowns and masks, which is, um, all, you know, an all hands on deck kind of move. Um, and we appreciate that. Um, a few other things. Um, if people need help with navigating some of the systems, uh, a couple of pieces of information I would share. You can um, go to our caucus website at republicans.wa.gov. Um, we can write there to different um, links important around coronavirus. Also, if you're needing help navigating um, small business issues, unemployment claims, those sort of things, you can contact my office as well. Um, my admin assistant is Diana Hawkins, and she's, we've both, um, been busy working on this, Diana, taking a lot of phone calls, and um, welcome the opportunity to help anyone. But I'll share my, um, my uh, call phone number is 253-840-4526. If anyone needs help navigating the system right now, things are unfolding very quickly, but we would be happy to help you. Um, let's see. A uh, couple, of, couple of things that um, just got off with the governor's office. Um, they said it is a myth that you need a pass to show that you are an essential worker. I know um, there, this, this, it, we, we believe in this people need it as well. We provided the web, but um, uh, came from, from the governor's chief staff saying that it is the myth that you need to show you're an essential worker and if anyone were pulled over by law enforcement they should get the um officer's name and badge number that may be doing something like that that from the state patrol this is not something they plan to do statewide so that's one thing they addressed um then there's been some concerns about whether or not special elections will have to happen in April. um there are some taxing districts that may have uh coming up or election coming up in April and those are gonna go ahead and move forward. So you if you live in an area that uh um the special ballot measures coming up, those are um likely to still happen in April. Um there's questions after the governor's most recent proclamation about church groups gathering to um do live um uh, broadcasts of, of services and, and the direction from the governor's office is it is okay to for them to gather in small safe groups if you need a couple of folks to do audiovisual stuff um, to get their services out to their congregations um, do it in a safe and small um, smart and small manner and that'd be fine um, let's see um, they're saying that, you know, on the hospital level, there's about 2% of patients being admitted daily are exhibiting um, COVID respiratory symptoms. So um, it's, it's, that's sort of what they expect right now. And um, they're treating people that come in with um, those respiratory symptoms, um, taking a lot of precautions there and dealing with those patients as they come in. And um, again, it just ties back to the, the need for the PPE 
um, equipment that they need. And, and everyone that's served on the front lines, uh, first responders, uh, the healthcare providers, you know, those working in the senior populations, long-term care, um, all need that PDE equipment right now. So um, I think I drew about everything that I had for today. Um, please reach out to my office if there's anything I can do to help. Um, continue to social distance and stay home, stay healthy, and um, we will make it through this. Excellent. And we make it through a little bit of our challenges here. Right. Right. So thank you. We are all having to learn new skill set here in this new time. Next, I have uh, Ryan Windish, again, Community Development Director for the City of Sumner. Let's make sure your mute is unmuted. Uh, I'm hitting it. I'm trying. There we go. All right, can Ryan, you? we sure can. Welcome. Go ahead, right. Ryan. Thank you. So the City of Sumner has been doing a number of things to try to support our businesses, and that's really where my focus is going to be. We're also, believe me, just like everybody else, scurrying around, trying to invent this as we go and trying to react uh, daily with the changes that are coming out. Uh, Carmen Palmer, our communications director, and Lana Hoover, our community engagement specialist, have also been just really on the front lines of <clears throat> trying to be connected with the community and putting out information to, to make it, uh, to get those resources out there. Uh, along the lines of things we've done, not unlike other jurisdictions, we have a COVID-19 website with resources listed there and things that the city is doing and not doing, meetings getting canceled, that sort of thing. We also have a taking care of business website particular to support for businesses. Um, that includes you know, familiar links to the state level stuff, regional level things, the Economic Development Board uh, website, which is, is also fantastic, as well as the uh, some or the uh, excuse me the small business association disaster relief loans uh to quite honest all this stuff kind of coming up and coming at us it's a little challenging to keep it current but we are doing the best we can we've also sent out information through the our e-news our weekly newsletter and then we've even taken pulled the email addresses off of our business license list and sent out direct emails to 450 businesses I have to say, not a lot of them pop back, so I was I was pleased to see that, uh, and just trying to get them the connections and the resources as well. And we've also Atlanta has been on the phone, making direct phone calls to our restaurants and coffee shops and small businesses that are as as we heard uh, being dramatically impacted by this to see what we can do and what they might need and make sure they're aware of the resources that are available. And then in terms of permits, uh, we're following the governor's guidance, really limiting that to just those emergency things, uh, essential facilities and, and projects, which is really a rare, very narrow list of things that we will be doing, issuing any permits on or, or doing inspections on. Uh, we are though, uh, continuing to process permits, not unlike I'm sure Puyallup and other jurisdictions are doing. Uh, we've got staff working at home, but they are tied in digitally and reviewing permits to be ready when this thing lets up to be able to issue permits and, and keep the economy, get the economy back on its feet. Uh, right now, any permits that may be issued, their, their hours are Wednesdays from 9 to 2 and by appointment only. And we're encouraging, of course, businesses are, are moving online. Uh, we're trying to keep up with, with that list of businesses that are doing that. Even a good book, our downtown bookstore has an online format now for and delivery for their products. Uh, a couple of bright spots I just wanted to put out there that I think embody uh, the kind of response we wanna see from Washingtonians and from Americans in crisis. Uh, when I sent out my first email to businesses letting them know what resources are out there, received a note from Derek Moeller. He's the president of the McConkie Company here in Sumner. For those of you who aren't familiar with McConkie, they're a long-standing long business in our industrial area, and they actually produce those little black plastic seed trays and bowl or uh, pots and things. Uh, Derek told us they had retooled and were going to be producing the clear plastic face shields for the health workers. He said they could do 10,000 per day, and then in a follow-up email, he said they could do 20, and he said they could even scale to 100,000 per day, which I thought was fantastic. And it's that kind of can-do attitude that I, I love to hear about and, and what we're doing. Uh, one other company in town that's fairly recent to Sumner, Penny Salsa, 
they're making available boxes of produce for sale at pickup at their facility on 140th uh, Street and on 140th Avenue in Sumner. Uh, they're repackaging. I don't know what, what they're doing exactly, but they have packaging or uh, boxes of, of produce available for pickup. So uh, that's also available on our website. There's an order form on there. So that's kind of the, again, we're, I don't think we're doing anything surprising, but we're doing the best we can to get that information out to businesses and, and try to let them know there's, there are resources available and a lot being done. Excellent update. Thank you. There's a lot of that can-do uh, attitudes going on in our community. Um, certainly part of the silver linings with something like this. Uh, we're, we're trying to follow all those stories, so keep sharing them. Uh, so next we have Mayor Dorr with us to give us an update of some of the things that the city of Puyallup has been supporting businesses on and just, I guess, other city operation updates we should hear about. Mayor Dorr, welcome. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, so as we know, these are really stressful and confusing times for everybody, and we truly appreciate the Chamber hosting these weekly calls. The uncertainty brought about by COVID-19 pandemic is bringing out the best in our people as people, as you've indicated on this call. And that part has, is the good news. People are organizing to reach um, other necessities, pushing to make sure that the most vulnerable are getting what they need. We saw Krista, and I don't know if I missed her on the call, her actions to make masks, so those are great things. As you know, Puyall is a generous community, and we have a smart, amazing, creative, you know, caring residents who are willing to help, and we are better together. For our business community, our local businesses are near and dear to our hearts at the council and at the staff, and we realize that these are really challenging times for all of our businesses, and we continue to support in any way we can. And please rest assured that I and the rest of the council will continue to look for ways to reduce the impact of COVID-19. Everyone on the council cares deeply about the business community and we're working together brainstorming and trying to come up with ideas we can be supportive during this difficult time. Next week, the city will be building out a website that will be dedicated to marketing and messaging for small businesses. Um, and we're looking at a marketing campaign branding for our downtown core and some of the other um, some other messaging uh, that we can help put out what's happening and what restaurants are doing what what business opportunities are happening with um, curbside or gift certificates so those types of things are coming our economic de development director Meredith is on the line and Meredith and Barbara Lopez, our finance director, did pull our business license contacts from the state of Washington. And next week, um, Meredith will be coordinating telephone conferences between business categories. Right now, they're currently putting you know, business license for car dealers, business license for retail, restaurants, et cetera, together. And Meredith will be coordinating, coordinating phone conferences with city management, um, myself, council, other council representatives with these individual groups to see which ways we can partner and support those businesses. Uh, we're still open for business even though City Hall is closed. All essential operations are continuing during the stay home, stay healthy order. And our staff is working really hard across departments to fill gaps and to make sure that our that needs are being met. Police, public works, utilities are out in the community keeping things running smoothly. City departments are working from home, but equally committed to keeping business moving forward. And one example is the City Permit Center is committing to serving the customers and citizens of Puyallup by providing the inspections to qualify in construction projects and permitting services, including um, responding to all our customers and citizen permit inquiries by phone or email. The city has opened a call center, and that number is 253-864-4170 to answer questions about service changes and resource availability resulting from the COVID-19 outbreak. And that center is staffed Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. Next week, we will hold the city council meeting and be available for people to listen in. The agenda is going to be limited to the topics that are absolutely necessary to support the routine essential functions of our local government. We have a 
COVID-19 page on the city's web page, cityofpuyallup.org. And it is, has information including a list of restaurants that are open for takeout delivery, resources for businesses and dis displaced workers, and information about our city services. So I encourage you all to check it out. And if you have additional resources that we need to add to that, you can let Meredith or Brenda Fritzvold know because we're constantly updating that. Um, and then I want to let you know that I've been in constant contact with Congressman Heck's office and actually Governor Inslee's office over this past week during the pandemic. And I wanted to let you know that Congressman Heck's office is on the line now. And the Congressman Heck will be hosting a Facebook Live event at 5 p.m. where he will be taking questions. So if you have additional um, questions, please pop onto that Facebook Live and ask them. Uh, and I've been working on the PPE issue from both the Congressman's, with the Congressman's office, with Governor Inslee's office. They are working very diligently and they've been so helpful and responsive trying to get those needs for our first responders. But in closing, you know, it's a really tough time. We are committed to providing support to each other and to you. We will continue to seek ways to lessen the impact and we're better together. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mayor Dorr. Uh, next, we will hear from Patrick Reed. Let me unmute you. There's a delay in my unmute. Oh, I had it. There we go. Okay, can you hear me now? We sure can, thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Tara and Lori, for adding me on last minute. I really appreciate that. Uh, my name is Patrick Reed. I'm the Public and Government Affairs Manager for the Secretary of State Corporations and Charities Division. And uh, also one of my other hats is as a Sumner City Council member. Uh, I'm here to speak today on behalf of the Secretary of State's office. Uh, initially, my thought was to share the status of our office and, and how we are filing uh, business documents at this time, but I'm going to expand on that uh, just briefly because I think there are some important points uh, that should be um, covered as people start to apply for the different um, relief programs that are available. Uh, first of all, I'll, I'll start with the, the worst news coming from our office at this point. Um, it, with considering everything else going on, the major impact in our filing process is going to be that we do not have an in-person filing currently. Uh, as many other offices, we are closed to the public. However, we have condensed our staff down to four people that are coming in during the day to process mail and payments and getting those posted into our system so then people can log into the system remotely and continue to process documents. So as far as people being able to file their annual reports, file amendments to their corporations or LLCs uh, or any other necessary maintenance documents, those are still proceeding. And at this point, we're anticipating them to proceed on schedule. We're not anticipating delays or backlogs as a result. Um, for, for those that aren't aware, 70% of the businesses in Washington are legal entities. Uh, that classifies anything other than a sole proprietorship. So when you're looking at an LLC or a corporation or a limited partnership, those are all created at the Secretary of State's office and, maintain, and have a separate maintenance process beyond the business license. So when you're looking at... Um, filing an annual report for an LLC, that is updating the legal entity itself and keeping its current status. And then folks often have to go to Department of Revenue and other state agencies to maintain the regulated activity. So as far as corporations, LLCs, and limited partnerships, as they begin to um, apply for the different relief efforts, my guess, based on history, is that those organizations providing, whether it be federal or private or any other type of organization providing relief, they are going to um, 
do some type of credentialing or some type of verification that the business exists. Uh, in the event a business has not maintained their status with the Secretary of State, they're going to show as either inactive or administratively dissolved. Based on history, if a business is in that current status, more often than not, it is going to eliminate them from eligibility from the grant or loan or different program that they're looking to acquire. Uh, so it's it's one that can be uh, challenging because we're we only contact the business once a year. Uh, the annual report is a very simple item that essentially maintains the public contact for the business and makes that available to uh, anybody that needs to to have formal contact with the legal entity. But we're also um, very critical when it comes to the point of. Uh, a court action or a credentialing process where somebody needs to uh, verify that a business exists and verify that they are current. Uh, as far as uh, some of the common documents that we're still dealing with uh, is we're filing annual reports and amendments uh, as people are keeping documents updated. We've seen a huge uptick in the amount of um, uh, certified documents. And, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the other message that people are acquiring certified, do, certified copies of their original articles of incorporation or their formation of the LLC, and then they're utilizing those in banking and or uh, contracting needs. So we've seen a sharp uptick just in the last week, uh, and we expect that to continue to grow. Luckily, with having uh, a handful of staff go in and uh, ingest those documents into the system, we're able to go through and do the certification and get those out uh, on a mail, a by mail basis uh, fairly quickly. So in the past, documents in a, in a situation like this, people would come to the front counter, they'd need to get the document done uh, on site and be able to walk out with it. Unfortunately, that is the one part we do not have available. People will have to either mail in their documents or uh, retrieve them or file them online. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions at any time. Um, I just posted a uh, link on the chat portion of the, this presentation that's got our page of basic services that are, uh, that are still in full operation. Again, the only real uh, slowdown that we're going to experience is not having public access. Um, and it, in addition to that, contacting us via, uh, although we don't have a phone uh, team answering calls directly at the moment, we do have uh, email, which is being fully staffed and, and responded to quickly. We have live chat where people can uh, get their ans questions answered the majority of the day long. And then we can, um, if somebody must speak to somebody, they can leave a voicemail, which is translating to email and we have staff responding from, to those remotely as well, but that may take a day or two depending on the volumes coming in. So that, that's the extent of my update. Uh, again, I appreciate being added on in the last minute. Um, I'm happy to, um, as we continue on, I'm happy to answer any additional questions that people might have as well. Perfect, thank you so much, Patrick. I'm going to kind of go back to a comment Mayor Dorb made earlier that someone from Congressman Heck's office is on the phone. So I'll take advantage of this opportunity to invite Congressman Heck next week if he has a moment and isn't inundated to call in and or someone from his office. Um, we would love to hear from you. So uh, we'll, we will follow up to reach out and would love to hear from you as well. Uh, so moving on, we have uh, two of our folks from the Pierce County Economic Development Department. We have Gary Westcott, who is a somewhat now been identified as the COVID-19 go-to point of contact uh, for Pierce County. And we also have Betty Capistani on the line, uh, the Economic Development Director. So uh, we have unmuted you, Gary. I don't see Betty on here. So I, I think I think we're, we're together six feet apart. Perfect. Let's go. So however all right. you can well, any holes, go for it. Well, thank all of you uh, both for um, uh, participating with the Chamber of Commerce for these calls. And I think the goal of all of us on the line is to be able to give resources to hopefully help stabilize our business community and get everything turned around as quickly as possible. A couple um, 
things I just wanted to give a shout out in the process. Um, we do appreciate um, everything um, Chris, the team back in DC is doing because we know that's another piece of the puzzle, trying to make everybody whole. I think all of our goals is trying to figure out how we keep the employer and employee connected in the long run. So these little pieces that the county's doing, the state's doing, federal government doing, it all helps in that piece. Also on Anthony on the restaurants, besides doing takeout, triple tip, doesn't matter, um, but it's, it's a way to pay it forward to, th to those that aren't getting those tips. And um, Ryan, thank you because um, you made a bunch of calls for masks and we actually have had manufacturers in Five, Ordine, Sumner, and Fredrickson uh, contribute to the PPEs, and we really appreciate um, that piece in the pipeline. And yes, Patrick, we do have you on the list, and we have you on the list because uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, Tuesday, um, our Pierce County Council actually authorized uh, no interest, uh, one-year loan, up to $10,000 for any uh, small business, 10 employees or fewer in unincorporated Pierce County and so one of those double checks we, we will call the Secretary of State and make sure they're on the good list um, so um, you can find any details of those pieces of information so many maybe some of the listeners on the line are not in city limits and they could qualify uh, for the loan program we might also have um, uh, Council Member Morrell on the phone. He actually was the one that, that helped get this all going. Um, and he's a big advocate and is also a small business owner and has that, uh, his daughter is a small business owner. Um, on our website, so if you go to piercecountywadgov slash edd, you can get all the latest information that we've gleaned from sources. And we've tried to label it under financial resources, employee, employer uh, information, and healthcare guidance. So please, you know, use that uh, to help. And I do have Gary here. I think in the last week there have been um, lots of people calling him, um, and he tries to be the best resource he can for business. So um, I'm not sure on timing if you have if you have questions of him um, or his direct uh, phone number is two five three seven nine eight six nine one six. Did uh, Gary have anything to add to that right now or just freeing himself up for questions? Uh, nothing right now. I think the biggest thing we have, um, I think the, the SBA was already brought up earlier, the SAR loan program that we're just starting to get up and rolling and uh, we're just going to be managing that, which will keep us busy for a little bit, I'm sure. Okay, great. And I know we do have some questions coming in and they may pertain to you. Um, so next we have, and this is our, our final speaker today, I had to kind of correct myself. I had, had introduced you as a phenom and I thought, gosh, I hope I used that word correctly. I looked it up. It's a person who is outstandingly talented or admired, especially an up and comer. So I think I did use it correctly, Krista Linden. Uh, so, so here with a couple hats on, uh, she has her nonprofit step-by-step. -step. She's created quite an event center uh, with Farm 12. Uh, but has also just responded to the call and rallying our community um, with a sewing force uh, that I to build or to create 40,000 um, masks. So here to talk to us a little bit about any of that is Crystal Linden. Hi, thank you for having me and I'm sorry it's under these terms. Um, yes, I'm founder and executive director. Am I on? You are on. I'm the founder and executive director of Step by Step and Farm 12, which is a social, social enterprise that has a restaurant and an event space. And our event space is empty now, as you can imagine. And um, so we got a call from Pierce County that there is a need, a shortage of about 40,000 masks and uh, asked if we could rally some of our seamstresses who make um, receiving blankets and bibs and uh, burp claws and those types of things for the women that Step by Step works with, which are low income women who are expecting a baby um, and working with that family through the pregnancy and through the first year of life. So um, we got that call. Um, we put out an all call to um, as many people as we could via Facebook and got an amazing response. I'm not sure we're going to hit the 35 or 40,000 masks that are needed, but we're working on it. Um, as quickly as we can uh, to get as many masks made as possible and you know we all know that it's not the ideal situation to have fabric masks but it is definitely better than nothing and so we are working um, 
with Joanne Fabrics and other fabric stores to bring uh, thousands of yards of fabric to the event hall. And then we are having, we're breaking that up into two to three uh, yard pieces and sending them out in bags to um, through the door, through the car window uh, to those seamstresses who are coming to pick them up. And we've had a tremendous response. We have way more people who can sew than we have fabric available to send to them. So um, I guess that would be my call. If anybody knows of a place where we could get a rayon, we're trying to put rayon fabric against the face or a linen um, and then cotton on the outside. And uh, the more fabric we can have, the more quickly we can get those made. Great. Well, again, just great community work and lots of information today. I know we started about five minutes late, so okay with everyone. We're going to go five minutes over here to take time to answer some of these questions that are coming in. Uh, the first is, what is the program for two and a half months of payroll that converts into a grant? And so was that maybe for Chris? Yeah, that's the, so in the phase three bill, there's $350 billion for small business loans um, those loans can be, uh, those loans are for two and a half months of payroll up to $10 million. Um, the, the loan can be used to pay for payroll. It can be used for mortgage interest on uh, uh, the business's mortgage. Uh, it can be used to pay utilities, rent, and other business expenses. Um, that is converted to a grant uh, so long as the business uh, maintains current employment levels. Um, but it, if you say a business has 10 employees and they cut one employee during this, then the amount that is forgiven as a grant um, or the, the amount that is a grant is reduced by 10%. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, being newer to Zoom, I'm not sure what happens to the group chat after, but I will direct your attention if you haven't enabled that toggle below to look at the chat. Uh, a lot of folks are posting a lot of the links that you're asking about there. So I would encourage you to reference that. Uh, one of the questions was for Kelly to repeat the links that she had talked about. I don't know if that question came in before she repeated them <laughs> or if this is yet another time, but we're going to give you another chance to repeat them. I think them. it paused on the Facebook. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Through Facebook it paused. Okay. So uh, a couple of those links. Okay. Sure. Happy to share those again. So it's the Seattle Coronavirus uh, Network. It's called SCAN, S-C-A-N, Public Health. Um, the website is scanpublichealth.org, and that's where people can go online um, that are King County residents only, but I'm sure you know them, or we may have some members that are King County residents, um, can go on and request those home test kits um, to help in the data modeling for tracking coronavirus. Um, I also want to share the, um, our caucus website, houserepublicans.wa.gov. Um, a link there um, with, with lots of links to that people will need during this crisis. And, um, and I'm just one, one thing I wanted to share is um, since I spoke about obtaining PPE, um, it's also my understanding that going through the county um, health departments is how businesses can put in their requests for obtaining PPE. So as the state um, makes um, national requests and gets part of the national stockpile, um, that'll come into the um, emergency management department of the state. They're then working with the counties to divvy up um, what um, th that PPE equipment. So um, nobody's getting everything that they need, but at least that is part of the system for um, requesting and obtaining uh, equipment right now. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, we've got a question here. It looks like from Brooke Stegmeyer. I heard the gentleman just now, that's you, Chris, from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, say that the employer portion of the payroll tax is suspended or eliminated for now. I also heard that will eventually need to be paid back 50% of it over the course of what sounds like two years. Can he clarify the terms of that provision? Um, yes. Um, so it's suspended until the end of the year, and then it won't, at least half of it will not come due until the end of 2021 and then the remaining half will come due at the end of 2022. Excellent. Great, and then I think we had one last question. I think, I think we, we could all probably answer some of this. How is messaging being done at a national and local level to help educate the essential and critical role small businesses play in the economy? Well, at least from the U.S. Chamber standpoint, you know, one of our top priorities in this phase three bill was getting plenty of assistance and relief for small businesses. 
um, specifically so that employees and employers could remain, remain connected. Um, and I think that's really reflected in the $350 billion that Congress provided for the loan program, mm -hmm. um, as well as a number of other provisions that small businesses will be for, uh, eligible for as we go through this crisis. Yeah, and you know, that's at the, the federal level. And then there are also chamber associations that are you know, regional and then statewide that are meeting regularly and chambers are reporting to them what we're hearing from the businesses, a um, little more power in numbers. So we're certainly let, letting the, associate, the associations and their lobbyists advocate uh, for that. So your voice is being heard, we're hearing it and we're in constant contact with these associations as well as the US Chamber of Commerce. So. Um, I know that that's from our standpoint. Any anyone else like to add anything to that? All right. Well, in close, thank you all so much, A, for your uh, patience as we dealt with some technical difficulties here trying to make this a video conference. Uh, we will host another next Thursday. Um, I've had some folks offer to speak and, uh, and if you have any ideas of who you'd like to hear from, uh, we'd be happy to take those into consideration. But um, hey, stay home, stay healthy, uh, you know, take good advantage of the time at home and, and, and to build up, I guess, take care of yourself, we'll say. We're, we'll, we'll, we'll try to take care of you, you take care of yourself. Thanks so much. Thank you.